Hi, I'm composer and flutist Nicole Chamberlain, and I'm going to talk about the extended techniques used in breaking glass. Uh, so the very first one is shh, which is very important. It's where people tell you just to be quiet and don't make trouble. Um, so here we go. We're going to finger low C, and you're just going to say shh. First try it without your flute, because you have a tendency when the flute comes up to make a flute face. We don't want that. So, sometimes I put my lips more out in front. Sometimes they're out and smiling. Play with both and see what works best. You do not want, you don't want flute tone. Okay. So the next, oh, and this also works on piccolo, by the way. So if I'm going to play C, it's not as resonant, but it's still, is, it's a supportive role at that point. Uh, then you'll also see, uh, for example, in measure 83, you'll see a very short shh. So you just want to, you know, like you're telling someone to just, you're tired of them and you want them to be quiet. Just an accented sh. Sh. Okay. The next one is ch. 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 And everyone has this in measure ten. Um, so I'm gonna demo uh, demo that just using your A flat. Ch. 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 Again with the teeth. Not a lot of lip. All right. Uh, and then you play them in a row and you start quiet and get loud. Okay. Uh, also, again, on piccolo, it's the same idea. It just won't be as resonant. But it's a supportive role and it's very important. It gives a little extra something, something on the top. Uh, okay. The next syllable is K-I. K. -I. K and it's used in conjunction with CH in measure 29. So I'm scrolling down here, measure 29. And so for uh, that, it's k, 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 k. Think of it as your double tongue. Duku or tuku, whichever one you use. Chuk, chuk. We have chukka. Chukka, chukka, cha, 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 cha. Should sound like a little little shaker, and you'll hear different overtones depending on what your uh, what your key is. So thirds have G, seconds have B flat, and then the first flutes have D, and then your piccolo doesn't have the cub, but it has the cha. Okay, great. Um, then we have boo, which is in the low flutes. Now I, I don't have a low flute, so I can't demo it, but it, it works beautifully. And if anything, it works better because it is more resonant. There's a lot of more pipe to amplify the sound. This one's a little trickier. Um, so, uh, see how there's some tension in my lips, air pressure behind it, and then I release it. Some people like to use the word poo instead of boo. It gives them a better pop. Try them both out and see what you like. Uh, so I'm going to do the low F. Not a lot of tone. Again, you're using your flute as an amplifier uh, to just give it more of a, a beefy sound. Uh, okay, and then we have jet whistles, which aren't on the piccolo. And they're not on the low flutes because that's a little trickier to get going. So I've just restricted it to the C flutes. Um, and low C is uh, the best example. The lower the flute, the tone, the lower the tone, the more keys you hold down, the better the jet whistle. So I am going to cover up with my lips this hole. I am not going to rotate my flute towards me or away from me. I'm just going to keep it just as if I would play flute. But I'm going to come to my flute. And I'm blowing a lot of air. I am shooting 
my air against this wall. I'm not shooting down. I'm not shooting this way. I am shooting against the wall to make the metal vibrate. Okay, you may need a little setup time. You may need to figure out things will get sloppy when you do all these extended techniques. You know, have your your rag handy so you can wipe in between takes or rehearsals. Um, but for the most part, it should, you know, it, it, you'll get better at it with some practice. Practice without your flute. Practice them with your flute. Uh, just to try uh, to get the hang of it. Also, try to sneak your flute in. Just to make sure you're not changing your face shape. Now, the last thing to talk about is the foot stomps. So for foot stomps, ladies, gentlemen, get your dress shoes out with the hard bottoms on it. Um, you know, rubber soles will work, but they're not great. And I know a lot of shoes right now are made with like a rubber on them. Um, women, you might have better luck with block heels. Men, your dress shoes, some of them may have a harder sole on them. But even if you do not have a hard soled shoe, a hard surface will work just fine. Um, as long as some of you have some hard soled shoes, the technique will still come off and you don't want everybody sounding identical anyway. Um, so just try your best. Hardwood floors are the best. If you don't have hardwood floors, tile works. If you don't have that, concrete works if you have an unfinished basement. Um, if that doesn't, if you don't have that, a slab of plywood, get creative. Maybe you have a little step stool or something, be careful. Um, but another tip is if you have the quick succession of the foot stomps, one right after the other, like in the three eighths, consider using more than one foot. The habit is to try to always use one foot. I have found when I've performed it that one, two, three, one, two, three. Um, and you may also find that you need to lift your your knee in order to get the stomps down on time. So there is a prep time. So think of it as like a breath and then plant your foot on the beat. Car. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for working on breaking glass. Please reach out if you have any questions and I will do my best to answer uh, any questions you may have. Thank you.